Day one, Summer Nam. We're gonna walk around and interview a whole bunch of people as per usual. We're gonna look for some really cool new stuff, but today is all about Fact Friday. We're big, we're bad, we're back at uh, Summer Nam 2019 in Nashville. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So Raj, you're an audiologist, you come from that perspective. Yeah. What is the number one question that you get asked the most? So one of the, the questions that we get asked the most is, I've always have been, I always, the customer always asks, uh, I'm hearing a lot of fatigue, you know, I always have to pop out my earbuds or my IEMs after two hours. So what is it that you, you do as a company that's different? So our response to that is, uh, firstly, we are, we, we are from the audiology background. We've been manufacturing our own hearing aids. Like a hearing aid, uh, our IEMs were designed for you to get at least six to eight hours minimum, whether you're on a stage, in a studio, minimum six to eight hours. So one of the things we did was we wanted to make the unit as light as possible so you don't feel the weight. So we got our units down to just four grams. Oh wow, <laughs> that's good. And that's four grams per side. Not just that, we added a clarity valve as well, this small hole here that you can see. And on a custom, it's just this hole. And what this does is whenever the unit is playing, right, it's perpetually releasing the pressure buildup from your ear canals. Yeah. So there's no pressure uh, yeah. buildup there as well, right? So these two functions combined with a larger nozzle, there's no fatigue on our ears and you can use it. I mean, you've used it on a plane, right? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. Use it on the not, fly over here. Yeah, you're not gonna use, have any fatigue on this for at least six to eight hours. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we do different. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, as a cable manufacturer, I'm sure you get asked all the time, you know, why this, why that, why should I bother to change? I mean, what is the number one question specifically you get asked? Uh, Actually, I, I'm not sure what the number one is, but there are a few things we sure. really like to bring to people's attention. Yep. And that is that if you're, if you're paying more for a connector and it's supposed to make improvements in the sound, it needs to be silver. Because there is no other metal that improves conductivity so much that it reduces the noise. Oh, really? And, and noise isn't just the noise you hear when you crank up the volume and there's a background noise. The noise is mixing with the music continuously. And so when, when we have a, a, a quieter connection, everything sounds cleaner. I did not know that. Yeah, and without silver, we're not really making an improvement. The nickel and gold, is they sound almost the same. Really? And gold prevents corrosion, which can be valuable. Sure. But if we're trying to make a sonic improvement, silver is the metal that'll do that. Ah, great. Thanks for letting me know. I love that. What is the most frequently asked question you get asked about sonarics? So, I think it's basically a statement from uh, clients that they say that you cannot mix on the headphones. Right. But, it, but if you use our software, our headphone plugin, you actually can because now you understand what's happening there. You see the frequency curve of your headphones. We have about 180 headphones now in our list. Fantastic. Average profiles. And if you want to go even higher, you can send your pair and we do a custom custom profile for your headphones. That's really nice. That's great idea. Yeah. So that's that's the main main point. And also our software is only who works also for speakers. You can do speaker measurement and you can I've done it. And yeah, how you like it? Yeah, it's great. And and also you can use it on a headphone, so you basically can speak same language between headphones and speakers finally. So wonderful. So Drew, what is the most frequently asked question you get asked? They, I get asked if the M1 is a C12 or an Elam 251. Um, the body is a similar dimension to the 251. Right. And the head basket is, is I would say, it, it's, it's somewhere between a C12 and a, and a UM57. But it's not a copy and it's not a clone. Um, it's its own thing. Yeah. I, when I did walk past, I did think, oh, is that like a seat? Yeah, so yeah. I'm just as guilty. Yeah, no, it's all right. <laughs> it's fine. Great, thank cool. you. No worries. Jonathan, what is the number one question you get asked about any piece of gear that you make? What's the number one you get? Uh, well, you know, I sell a ton of the red eye. It's a real popular item, and yeah. it's something I've never put any energy into marketing or anything with, but what makes it really great, it's a fantastic sounding, 
active or passive DI and a reamp box in one. Ah. And, and, and people go, oh, and they get it and they want a reamp box, so they buy it. And then they don't realize it's also a great DI. But the key to it is you can insert your DAW like the insert on a console. So I have to tell these guys all the time, you have to set up your guitar, your, the red eye, your DAW, and your amp, and play through the whole chain. And once you do that, when you reamp, it will sound identical to what, uh, what you put down. So much so that if you, you take the two tracks, what you did live and what you played back, if you combine them and flip the phrase, they will completely cancel. Amazing. And reamp people, people reamping always say it never sounds the same. I just want to say, people ask me about this box and what it can do, and that's one, and I sell thousands of them. But once they get hip to that, it's really great. But I don't know if that was the right thing to say, but No, 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 it's just cool. Yeah. No, no I mean, I, if you haven't brought it up, I wouldn't know about it, so that's yeah. great. Yeah. The Red Eye, simple box, but it's just a very great sounding DI, active with phantom power, passive without phantom power, and the reamp box, and they run simultaneously with each other. Amazing. So, we love this. What is the number one question you get asked about it? Um, how long does it take to charge? <laughs> Zero. Has Zero. no battery, doesn't need yeah. charge. As soon as it's plugged into uh, a USB device, it, it works right off the bat. Is and it taking a pretty minimal amount, so it's not... Uh... It, it detects the device yeah. and it adapts the power consumption to each different device. Right. It will limit the volume, for example, if you're on a small device. And you can always supplement with a, the second port, you can bring additional electrical power Great. and bring it back to full volume without draining the device. Fantastic, thank you. The second question, oh. I know you were supposed to no, ask no, no. it, but we get asked is like, Please. does it have latency? Has zero latency, it's using USB signal, so it's real time, you can use an instrument, you can play, you can do tap tempo recording. Yep. <laughs> no question. Fantastic. So, Will at Nugent, what is the number one question you get asked about the master chair? So the one that's been popping up a lot today is, is this just a general software that covers every site or is it more detailed than that? It's much more detailed. China, the kind of the rule of thumb for a lot of people is negative 14 lofts to mix to. This has that option, but it goes more in detail. Each, each site, each codec option has its own requirements and recommendations, and you can really tailor even separate mixes to go into Spotify or YouTube or Pandora or wherever. So you can make specific moves for specific sites, essentially. Or find the average between all of them. Exactly, exactly. That little Goldilocks, Goldilocks zone, as they were. <laughs> Marvelous. So, Thank you very much. All right, Patrick. At even time. What even is the number one most frequently asked question you get about anything? Oh man, that's a good one. Okay, so a lot of the, one of the most frequently asked questions I get when I go to trade shows and just yeah. meet up with people in general yeah. is like, when we come out with a new algorithm on the H9, like, how do people get it? That's yeah. a pretty frequently asked question, and the answer is if you have an H9 Max, you get it for free. You can just download it and the update, and then there you go. If you have an H9 Core or standard, you can buy it separately for twenty dollars. Right. Yeah, and you can just download that in the store. You can try it out, trial it out, see if you like it. If you don't, right. don't how long's the trial? I believe the trial is like about a minute long, so you get to try out different sounds. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so what? Colin from BAE is the number one question. It could be about UK sound, could be about BAE. Okay. But what is the most frequently asked question oh, you I, get I have, about? Oh, I have that answer. Oh, you do? Okay, oh, good. Oh, yeah. What is it? Well, here's the thing. A lot of people say the first thing out of their mouth is, well, how are you different than some of these other companies that do the same thing? And I say, number one, we don't do the same thing. Right. What's really important to know about BAE gear, especially our EQs, is all the parts within them are 100% interchangeable with a vintage Navy unit. So if right. it's a tantalum cap, we use a tantalum cap. If it's polypropylene, we use polypropylene. The cards are interchangeable, the switches are interchangeable, and the circuits are virtually identical. We're the only company who can say that about our product. Plus, we've been doing it for 20 years. It's a little bit different. We're not outsourcing overseas. We're not. We're hand making them in North Hollywood, California. Same guys. 
Yeah. We started making them 20 years ago with Brett. Right. Yeah. And when you really look at the components inside, how they're put together, they're works of art on the inside, whether it's the hand wound Canford wire and hand loomed, or it's the just the individual cards and how they're stuffed. They're really works of art, and that's what I try to put across to people. We don't do the same thing. We make handmade units just like the originals back in the early 70s. Fantastic, great answer. So what is the most frequently asked question you get asked about golf us? So apart from the normal iLock authorization stuff, a lot of people, they love what Golf Boss does, but they don't know exactly what it's doing. Um, in simplest terms, it's just trying to maximize the amount of information you provided it. And it's really just trying to do frequency unmasking and really reveal all the information that was there all along, but you might not have heard. So, fantastic. I love that. Mr. Jonathan Pines, how are you, my A friends? pleasure, sir. Always a pleasure Always to have produced to like you. a pro on our booth. It's the end of the first day. Day one, Summer Nam 2019, bobbleheads. Bobbleheads? Bobbleheads, we've got bobbleheads. Oh, can I get one of those? If, if you only know a guy. I have to I know a guy. I think I know a guy. Do I know a guy? You know a guy. You know a guy. So, Mr. Pines, what is the, what's the question you get asked more than any and it could be about gear, it could be about recording, it could, I don't know. What's well, the sort of like... You know, a lot of times people will ask me because they know that I have worked with a certain amount of artists and I work for a microphone company and I work for a mic preamp company, how to get a better vocal sound. That okay. comes up a lot. And usually what I say is matching a microphone to your voice is a great place to start. Microphones are like the color palette that we have. You know, there are days that I want to use Elysium Crimson and Thalo Blue. There's days I want black and white. There's days I want a finger paint with red, green, and blue. So it's finding the right thing that fits your voice and complements your voice. Did you I work on that? Because that rhymed really nicely, was it? Yeah. You know, you have to have your set pieces. But you, you talk to somebody and say, what kind of music do you do, first sure. off? What do you like and don't like about your voice? Or what do you want to change? Like, uh, my voice doesn't cut through. Okay, you want a brighter, more forward microphone. My voice sounds thin and small. Oh, yep. maybe a ribbon, maybe something bigger, richer yep. will be more effective to it. And then, you know, you talk about how a micro preamp might complement them. Types of EQ, the difference between a, yep. you know, a standard kind of EQ or an inductor EQ. Do you want a warmer, bigger sound? Do you want to change, do you need more cut? Do you need to project through more? What kind of compression are you using? Nice. You know, would it be a compression chain? Do you think about using a FET compressor with an optical compressor? Or do you need a dial bridge? Do you want something a little more grabby and a little more, bring it right out for you? Um, and so that, basically the answer is, have a snizzle ton of acquired knowledge, I think well, is the answer. No, but the answer <laughs> is try things out. I think, yeah. I think I suggest to people starting out always, get a palette of microphone choices. Sure. Great microphone preamps are fantastic. It, they have differences, some are warmer, some are more forward. Microphones, everybody can hear the difference right away. You put three different microphones up and people go, oh, 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 I like that one. And that's the whole name of the game. Find something you like that makes you want to perform better. Well, it's interesting, just to further that, because I like this, 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 uh, this topic. Yesterday we were at Blackbird and we were counting vocals. And we had, we did a shootout of like the four, the four mics. 251, U47, U67, and C12. Now you could argue C12 and 251 are pretty darn similar. Well, I can tell you the differences. They're not. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're in a similar same family. capsule. Same capsule. Um, and we listened to it in context of the track, and we also listened to it on solo, so you could hear the, the girl's voice on the microphones in solo, and then in context. What was interesting is the 47 was the best mic for her voice. Okay. And 47's characteristic, I was talking to somebody earlier about this, is what, I think what we love about them is you can apply EQ to them and they always sound good. The problem with lot, lots, not most, but lots and lots of very cheap microphones is it might sound bright and airy, but as soon as you apply EQ to them, they're like, oh, oh. They get a little scary in the upper scary. mid range. Yeah, and 47's just seem to... Particularly it's, good, I mean, one of the things Blackboard has probably the most amazing collection of microphones on the planet. Sure. So given the 50 or 60 that Mr. McBride has, yep. he has some incredibly wonderful examples of them. And uh, there, you know, people don't know this about U47s, there were close to 10,000 made. And some of them are amazing, and some of them are yep. a little farther in their life cycle sure. than that, oh, yeah. than you might want to see. Well, this one was special, it's great. However, 
The reason why I bring it up to, to, to talk to your point was that was the best microphone for a voice. The best microphone for the song was the 67. Because we had this bass line which was pick, played with the pick, and it was dug in and we overdrove the amp and it was just like grit, 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 grit. And the 47, even with a bit of EQ applied to it, just didn't, wasn't rock and roll enough. The 67 had a little bit more of the mid-range you would expect, a bit more punchiness. Is that the right word? Who knows what the right word is? Who cares? But anyway, it just sounded better. So that's also another uh, um, conversation thing is like, Sometimes what sounds great on the in vocal. The, yeah, what happens yeah. in solo stays in solos. Yeah. What happens in the track might be a record. Exactly. That's a big deal. So I like that. Good yeah. answer, good question. But I, I encourage people to experiment because as you just pointed out, the obvious thing, the most expensive mic in the room is not always the right sure. thing. Sometimes it's a handheld. Sometimes the singer's gonna be more comfortable with a handheld. They're gonna perform better. You know that through um, some of the amazing records you've made with amazing artists that sometimes amazing you, artists you, made a difference, you yeah. put it you know yeah. put a 58 in Mr. Tyler's hand sure. this is this is this is his working well, the, the, world when we did well, last time we were in Blackbird a year ago so probably like a year ago today we did um, 12 mic shootout and we went deep we had like clones we had you know we had 87 which is like 0.04 percent of their microphone collection yeah exactly no we had the students bring in their own, own mics ah. So they, we got like, we got the 47 that Bob Clear Mountain says is the greatest 47 ever made. Which I believe is, I can't remember if it's I want to say three one nine or 20, one. Or, yeah, they, I can't. It's, 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 a, it's a low they number. Know, they know, it's they like don't a, always, you know, they like to keep that close to the hat. So. Yeah, it's, it's a sub 200, <laughs> one of the first like couple yeah. of hundred they made. And, uh, Mylar M7. Um, and uh, he's going to walk across, he's going to walk across, let him walk across. Wait, it's a, it's a yeah. he's Hello. One, he's one of the only people we would let do that. <laughs> I love this guy so much. You can, you're going to be here tomorrow, yes? Yes, I am. We're going to come and see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the only Paul gentleman, Mr. Paul Wolf. Wolf. Chicago. <laughs> Did you guys pay extra to have those guys across from you? <laughs> love you guys, don't ever change. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Um, the. Um, so yes, you have the most one, you, you pick the one. Yeah, so, so it was fun. So we got 47, 67, 87 clones of those microphones, um, you know, C12, everything, oh, 251. And we did both the test and the track and then solo. Solo was a little not a smart idea because some of the cheaper ones were brighter and people in solo sort of liked them. Um, but then when you put them in the track, it was all lispy. So interesting sort of. It, uh, um, thing, but this was the most interesting one. In everybody's top four out of the 12, the one that won was the 47. It was like number one, number three, number two, but somewhere maybe on the lower of the top four in almost everybody that picked was an SM7. SM7B. Blind well, test yeah. against one of the lots most of $15,000 microphones. SM7 well, came in. But also to your point about the U67, Yep. There have been so many records made with that. It is the sound of a lot of rock. Yep. Same thing with an SM7B. It is the sound of yep. a lot of rock. It yep. sounds right in so many situations. Yep. So that 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 lends a lot to that. All right, one quick little factoid. What's They're closing the difference, us down. What's End the difference the between day. a C12 and a 251? I don't know, you tell me. You're the expert. Okay, I'm not. same capsule, technically. Um, different head grill, different body, different transformer, and notably, uh, depending on whether it's an export model, which would be a 251E, different tube. So in the export model, you would see a 6072A, same tube in a C12. In the non-export or German Brown Book version of it, you will see an AC701K, the same tube in an M49, M50, and many things. And are, they, are they really, really different? They are noticeably different sounding. Thank you very much. Appreciate My it. My pleasure. Big hello to our friends at Produce Like a Pro. Thank you. That was the end of day one at Summernam on Friday the, I don't know what the date is today, but anyway, it's not Friday, it's Thursday, and it was the end of the first day. Bada boom, bada bing.